In this problem, we're going to look at finding the error in a third degree Taylor polynomial for estimating 0.5 to the one-third using the function 1 minus x to the one-third, and we're going to compare it to the estimate from Taylor's inequality. Just a little bit about Taylor's inequality. Now we know that a Taylor polynomial consists of the first n derivatives of f of x, so it has information about the first n derivatives, so we would expect our Taylor polynomial to differ from the actual function by no more than the maximum of the n plus first derivative. That's the idea behind Taylor's inequality. So what we want to do is we want to bound the absolute value of the n plus first derivative when we have x minus a less than or equal to some constant. Okay, x will be the point that we're evaluating our Taylor polynomial at, a is the point where it's centered. Now the exact error is given by our function evaluated at x minus our Taylor polynomial evaluated at x. And we expect that to be less than or equal to m, which is our upper bound on the n plus first derivative, over n plus one factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus one. Notice how similar this looks to a Taylor coefficient. Pretty much is, except we're maximizing the n plus first derivative as opposed to just evaluating it at x. So let's see how this plays out for this problem. The well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our Taylor polynomial. So we need some coefficients. We need f evaluated at 0. Well, f of x here is 1 minus x to the 1 third, so it's actually just 1. Now we need some derivatives. f prime of x is 1 third times 1 minus x to the negative 2 thirds times a negative 1 because of chain rule, so we'll make that negative. Therefore, f prime of 0 is negative 1 third. f double prime of x is going to be positive 2 ninths, bringing the exponent down, times 1 minus x to the negative 5 thirds, again times a negative 1 because of chain rule, making that negative. So f double prime of 0 is negative 2 ninths. f triple prime of x is equal to, we bring this down and multiply, that's going to give us 10 over 27 times 1 minus x to the negative 8 thirds times again a negative one because of chain rule making that negative so f triple prime of zero is negative ten over twenty seven so we have the coefficients of our that'll help make our Taylor polynomial or we have our derivatives at zero that'll make our coefficients I should say let's go ahead and find the fourth derivative because we do need to max we're gonna need to maximize that for our Taylor's inequality so since we're already taking the derivatives let's just get that done uh, negative 8 thirds times negative 10 27ths is 80 over 81 times 1 minus x to the negative 11 thirds and again by chain rule makes that negative. Now we'll talk about that one in a second. Let's first build our Taylor's our third degree Taylor polynomial for this guy. So p sub 3 of x is 1 minus one-third times x minus a, remember a is zero so it's just x, minus two-ninths times x squared over two factorial minus ten twenty-sevenths times x cubed over 3 factorial. So let's simplify this guy just a little bit. So 1 minus 1 third x minus 2 factorial is just 2. That cancels with that 2. So we get 1 ninth x squared minus, now that we can fact cancel the 2 out with the, that, a 2 from the 10, and that's just going to give us 5 over 27 times 3, which is 81, x cubed. So there's our third degree Taylor polynomial. Now what we wanted to estimate was 0.5 um, to the one third. So for our function, 
we want to estimate f of 0.5 because putting 0.5 in for x would give us 0.5 to the one-third. So you got to be careful about that on these kind of problems. If this had been estimating 0.2 to the one-third, then x would have actually been 0.8. Okay, so it's because it's 0.5 that it seems like this is the same 0.5 as this, but actually this is x, and 1 minus x is what gives us this 0.5. So p sub 3 of 0.5 to a few decimal places is about 0.79784. OK, now we can actually calculate the error in our third degree Taylor polynomial. So e sub 3 of 0.5, that's the error in our third degree polynomial at 0.5 is equal to the absolute value of f of 0.5 minus p sub 3 of 0.5. Okay, so p sub 3 of 0.5 we just calculated here. f of 0.5, well that's just 0.5 to the one third. So you can put that in your calculator, find the difference, and we take the absolute value. It's a pretty small number, it comes out to be about 0 0.00414. Okay, so that's the actual error. Now let's see what we would have gotten from our Taylor inequality. So first thing we have to do is maximize the fourth derivative. So first thing we would do is see we're on the interval from 0 to 0.5 because 0 is where we're centered, 0 0.5 is where we're evaluating this thing. Now between 0 and 0.5 we can see if we take this uh, the fifth derivative the only critical point is going to be at 1 which is outside our interval and our function is not defined, the function we're trying to maximize here is not defined at 1 anyways. But in general, you do need to check that. You need to check, you would need to check the next derivative down to see if there's any critical points in your interval. We happen to not have any, so we don't have to worry about it. So the fourth derivative evaluated at 0, and we do the absolute value of this, so because we want the largest magnitude. So we can drop the negative is 80 over 81. The fourth derivative at our other endpoint of 0.5 is equal to 80 over 81. I'm going to write it point, 1 minus 0.5 is 1 half. I'm going to write it as 1 half because it will help with how I'm going to simplify this. Minus 11 thirds. Now because of the negative, I can take the reciprocal here and I get 80 over 81 times 2 to the 11 thirds. Well, this is definitely going to be larger because I can tell because I'm taking the 80 over 81 and now I'm multiplying it by 2 to the 11 thirds so that's going to make it bigger than 80 over 81. So what I have here is my M. Okay, and that's the thing we really needed. So going back, just a reminder of Taylor's inequality m over n plus 1, n is 4 in this, or sorry, n is 3 because we're a third degree Taylor polynomial, so it'll be over 4 factorial. This will be raised to the fourth. x is 0.5, a is 0. So putting this all together, we would want to know that our third degree Taylor polynomial would have, at 0.5 would have an error of no more than, we're going to insert our m, 80 over 81, times 2 to the 11 thirds. Now it's x minus a, so 0 0.5 to the n plus 1, so to the fourth, all over 4 factorial. All right. I've already calculated this out. This comes out to be 0 0.03266. And we see that our error bound is greater than our actual error which is what we expect to have happen.